You can't help but wonder why. Why target children at a pop concert? The United Kingdom coming to grips with its worst terror attack since the London transport bombings of 2005. An improvised explosive device in the atrium of Manchester Arena. Islamic State militants have claimed responsibility. Contrast, well, the absolute worst in human nature with the best. Uh, within a few short hours, Mancunians had more than met the needs of uh, blood banks, with donors continuing to line up. Politicians contesting next month's general election, suspending the campaigning as the UK comes to grips with the second attack in two months after the one that had targeted Westminster Bridge and the Houses of Parliament. Why now? Uh, the probe into the latest attack to rock Europe comes as Donald Trump touches down on the continent, part of a first tour as US president where the word terrorism has been quite a bit on his lips. But who to blame? And how to really prevent blind terror from becoming the new normal? Today in the France 24 debate, we're looking at the Manchester attack. And uh, with us from Bristol, Bristol Simon Schofield of uh, the Human Security Centre think tank uh, from London. We welcome Jonathan Russell, executive director of uh, the Quilliam Foundation. Welcome to the show. And from Boston, Northeastern University's Max Abrams. He's a fellow on the Council on Foreign Relations Center for Cyber and Homeland Security. Welcome back to the show. The uh, France 24 debate on Facebook and Twitter, the hashtag F24 debate. It was 10.33 p.m. local time. Fans starting to exit an Ariana Grande concert, the improvised explosive device going off outside the turnstiles between uh, Manchester Arena and Victoria Station. And uh, there, there we see where the uh, explosion took uh, place just a short while ago. Uh, police identifying positively uh, the suspect, a 22-year-old, saying they're still searching to, for uh, potential accomplices and have made raids in at least two different locations. Simon Schofield, what do you make of, of what happened on, uh, on Monday evening? Uh, this represents a significant escalation as far as Islamic State's operations against the United Kingdom. However, it's obviously very much in keeping with what they've done so far. But the last 24 hours have shown an extreme amount of activity from Islamic State. So obviously we've had the Manchester attack here in the United Kingdom. But at the same time, Islamic State centrally has executed... Um, a number of, of Kurdish people in the Middle East, and and there's also now been this situation developing in Marawi in um, in the Philippines, where one of Islamic State's uh, wilayat, as they call them, these sort of regional franchises, appears to be in, invading a city in um in in the Philippines. Yeah, and we're, we're seeing live images, uh, Simon, uh, from that vigil that's been uh, taking place in uh, Manchester. Earlier, France 24's team spoke to a mother and a daughter who were at the concert. A lot of the girls were, you know, young teenagers, 15, 14, 15, 16, who come out maybe as groups for their first night out to watch their favourite artist. Mm -hmm. And they were literally, you know, it was just horrendous. I mean, the, the panic amongst... The people, once we hit that corridor, was just overwhelming. I was just frightened. I was, it was really like a loud bang, and we were just walking down the stairs uh, ready to exit when, every, when we saw everyone running, like a big pool of people running out. Jonathan Russell, what, what do you make of what happened in Manchester? Uh, what do you make of the... Is there anything we can say about the timing of this two months after the attack in London uh, tw and the biggest such attack we've seen since 2005? Uh, well, well, I think certainly it, it falls into a trend of pinprick attacks across, across Europe and across the world. Um, where, where terrorism for, for ISIS, for al-Qaeda too, really, is very tactical. It's, it, it, the strategy is, is much more to do with, with prompting chaos, uh, trying to get states and societies to, to turn on each other and, and really criticise each other. Um, the, the other thing that, that we should note timing-wise is that it falls four years after the, the murder of Lee Rigby by jihadist terrorists, and, and we know that, that anniversaries play a big role in uh, terrorism too. So I think those, those things 
as well, of course, as the, uh, the, the ongoing election campaign, uh, means that, that this um, is likely to have a, a pretty big attack, uh, a pretty, pretty big you know, consequence for, for the UK, uh, UK sphere. Uh, why Manchester in particular? Jonathan Russell? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, why Manchester in particular? Uh, Manchester is, is, you know, one of, uh, one of uh, the UK's bigger cities. Um, I, I think we should focus on, on the fact that, that this was a concert. It's quite reminiscent of, of you know, the 2002 Bali bombings, of uh, the attacks on the Pulse nightclub, or the Istanbul uh, attacks uh, at Christmas time. These are all places where, where people are, are caught off guard. Uh, it's mass casualty because of the nature of, uh, of the soft targets. It's very difficult to protect. And, and most importantly, I think it shows that this is an attack on, on a way of life, on, on what they would term as Western decadence. Yeah, because and, what's the... Uh, what's as much the as anything, it's, it's an attack on innocence. It's, it's, it's really, uh, you know, saying that the, the, the jihadist ideology takes no, uh, takes no prisoners. We, we, can, uh, we can attack anything, even eight-year-old children in this case. Yeah, eight-year-old children. So uh, is this a... Um... How, how is this going to serve if, for instance, they want to recruit people? Is it really going to win people over to their cause, killing eight-year-olds? Well, you'd think, uh, you know, our, our rational response would be, oh, this is barbaric, this is horrendous. But as long mm. as, as British society will, you know, be, be, uh, be angry at that uh, and be fearful, therefore, of jihadists, it's likely to pr prompt us to, to blame all, all Muslims. And, and we've seen various... Um, sus various commentators within British society today um, turn on turn on Muslim communities and 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 play that blame game, and and you see I think that feeds absolutely into this management of savagery uh, rhetoric and and uh, and broader plan that the jihadists have. It it really does spark that chaos, and so I think it's up to us to to say well you know um, sure. Uh, ISIS are, are barbaric. But as, as Donald Trump said this morning, ISIS are also losers. They're losing men, they're losing territory, they're losing money in Iraq and Syria. They are very much on the back foot. This uh, is the, the, the tactics of, of a group in its death throes. And, uh, and, and therefore, you know, we've got to come together to, to make sure that ISIS do not get the, uh, the soft victories that they hope by tearing apart our societies and, and, and to make sure, really, that we've got a long-term strategy to deal with the pernicious ideology that underpins all of their actions. Yeah, but we heard Gr Greater Manchester Police uh, speaking earlier. Uh, they were saying how uh, anybody who sees any kind of hate crime or hate speech should be reporting it to police very careful to, uh, to, uh, to speak out against singling out all Muslims. Uh, Greater Manchester Police, which says that it has positively identified uh, the 22-year-old who's at the heart of Monday's blast. Part of this response has seen us arrest a 23-year-old man in connection with the attack. And we've also carried out two warrants, one in Wally Range and one in Fallowfield. The one in Fallowfield did see us undertake a controlled explosion to gain entry. And again, I just wish to reassure those communities that was something that we were doing to gain safe access. It is nothing to be concerned about. Max Abrams, uh, France 24's uh, Wasim Nasser, who follows jihadi networks for us, uh, very cautious uh, when he took in uh, the, the words there from Manchester police, uh, even cautious when it comes to uh, saying whether or not this was in fact a suicide attack as such, since statements put out on their propaganda networks by Islamic State militants uh, point to several bombs and don't mention a suicide attacker. Uh, your thoughts on, on what happened Monday night? It is interesting. So there does seem to be this disconnect where local authorities say that they have a body. Um, and that, you know, they're relatively confident that, that they have the body of the suicide attacker. And then the credit claim that came out uh, makes no reference to a martyrdom operation. Uh, I actually think that there have been a few credit claims by Islamic State. Uh, at least one of them was rescinded. 
The organization basically seems confused whether it was a martyrdom operation, how many people uh, were involved even. Uh, in, in one of the messages, which was rescinded, according to the New York Times, uh, there was a reference to uh, not just multiple bombs, but multiple attackers. And I really think it just goes to show that Islamic State is very keen to claim credit for violence all over the world, uh, even when the organization really doesn't know what it's talking about. D didn't name um, any of the, of, of the actual perpetrators, supplied no new information, which turned out to be true. Um, and so this is uh, the act of a very desperate group uh, not only is it apparently claiming credit for an incident that it doesn't understand, but this is a group that's acting very stupidly uh, by even claiming credit for the attack at all. I have research which basically identifies what, what actions do smart terrorist groups do and which actions do stupid terrorist groups do. In Islamic State, although pundits like to wax on about how strategic the group is, in reality, Islamic State ticks off all of the characteristics that historically have been associated with failure. Uh, and so I'm not at all surprised that the caliphate is a total failure, but, but, that the group is being you know, crushed in its stronghold that it's having recruitment problems. But, but Max, you, you, Max Abrams, you, you, you heard Jonathan Russell there saying how uh, for uh, ISIS, the idea here may be uh, to get people to hate all Muslims and that there have been, has been some inflammatory statements that have been heard uh, this Tuesday. Yeah, I, I, I'm familiar with that argument. If you look at what Islamic State has tended to say as well as what Al-Qaeda has tended to say, it's been very, very inconsistent. And so it's easy to seize on certain things that they've said, even ones that are completely contradictory. Uh, so we have reference, for example, to the 2004 document called Management of Savagery. And that document is often invoked to say that Islamic State is really strategic, that basically it wants to attack, especially in the West, in order to polarize those communities, turn the communities against each other, um, have basically the majority non-Muslim population crack down on the Muslims, which will uh, inflame relations between them, growing the number of extremists. I'm familiar with all of that. But actually, if you look at management of savagery, I would reread it, because most of what it says is not that. Most of what it says is that the goal actually is to create a caliphate um, and to prevent countries like the UK from uh, battling uh, you know, Muslims and Islamic State. And, and attacks like these that we're seeing in Manchester are precisely why Islamic State doesn't have a caliphate. Because Islamic State has attacked countries throughout the world, and what has happened, contrary to some of the predictions in, say, management of savagery, is that it has created a very strong, cohesive, <clears throat> anti-Islamic State military coalition. And what that ensures is that in every single battle, Islamic State is completely outmanned. And that's why the group is doing so terribly. Uh, Simon, Schofield, Simon Schofield, let me bring you in on this. Do you agree? Um, no, I don't. I'm afraid I, I agree with Jonathan Russell on, on this one. Um, if you look at the strategy papers that Islamic State published in 2015, the extinction of the Grey Zone in their Dabiq magazine, it made very clear that they've identified something they call the Grey Zone. And that is basically what they refer to as a state of hypocrisy. It's a, a condition in society wherein Muslims and non-Muslims can coexist together. Or, or in their case, infidels and, and Muslims can coexist together. Um, it matches very much what their, what their um, strategy was when they were al-Qaeda in Iraq. In Iraq. The, what they did there was they attacked yeah, Shia that's not, that's o over and over again um, to, uh, until the Shia counterattacked the Sunni. And, and what that then did was that brought moderate Sunnis into the, uh, you know, their sphere of influence. And they're, they're trying the same thing in, in the That's Western world, is that they, they want to create this hostility against, um, against Muslims, and they want to drive moderate Muslims into their sphere of influence. Max Abrams? I mean, AQI, according to jihadis themselves, is an example of a colossal failure. 
I agree that AQI acts in many ways like ISIS, and both are total failures. You watch, looking back like 10 years, for example, jihadis are going to cite ISIS as like the GIA, you know, in, in Algeria. Um, these are groups, yes, that sometimes put out, you know, propaganda or, or, or strategic, you know, guidelines. And so when people act, you know, when ISIS guys act in accordance with them, pundits say, look how strategic these groups are. But that's not good evidence at all. What's all right, we're much better evidence is to identify empirically, not, you know, not what they have to say, but rather what sort of behavioral <clears throat> characteristics are associated with success, even in the eyes of other terrorists, versus which sort of behavior right, are associated with failure. Success or failure. We're going to pick up Max Abrams. Abrams. We have to take, have Max, we have to know, take a very other. quick break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate. The Observers, presented by Derek Thompson. Take a new look at the news. Eyewitness accounts from those at the heart of the action all over the world. Exclusive videos you've never seen before, all verified by our journalists. The Observers on France 24 and France24.com.